What were you doing in 1985? It was that year that a friend of mine, Migdalia Arnon, she's a physician, a pathologist, uh, wrote this book, Cancer Biology. An amazing book. I have a few copies of it. I'll put it on my website if you'd like to order. It's inexpensive. A study of cancer uh, pathogenesis. The beginning. Genesis in the beginning. The beginning of the cancer disease. The most amazing book I read because she has a chapter in here. I didn't know her in 1985. I just met her three or four years ago. She called me after watching the show and she said, Mr. Kaufman, you're right. In here she has a chapter on fungus and cancer. And what she said in this book boggled my mind because she said, you know, I don't know why, but I look at cancer tissues and if I immunofluoresce them, if I put them under light, they all glow a bright green color. Why do you suppose that is? I couldn't figure it out. Today I'll share that with you. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. You know, as you've seen in other segments and other shows, uh, it was April 2016 that I spoke about fungus being involved in the disease called cancer to a group of open-minded oncologists, great oncologists. They're called integrative oncologists. So they integrate nutrition and health and exercise and supplementation into traditional chemo, radiation, and so forth uh, therapies in their patients. Well, it's a little bit technical. But these are slides taken directly from my presentation. I want you to see them today. And what about these green granules? Okay, let's go back and, and discuss this a little bit. First of all, the question had to be presented to these doctors. Does fungus mimic cancer? Do you think it does? I do too. And so in a journal called Mycoses in 2014, this appeared. Many fungal infections can mimic many types of cancer, including cancer of solid organs, the liver, the kidneys, etc., skin cancer, and even leukemia and lymphoma. Other fungal infections including, and look at that word, paracoccidioidomycosis, histoplasmosis, cryptococcosis, coccidioidomycosis, aspergillosis, mucormycosis, and blastomycosis can mimic both the clinical and radiological findings of lung cancer. <sighs> Do you believe those words? Does that protect the innocent? I mean, those are all fungal diseases that doctors are saying, whoops, it's published. Every cancer specialist must review that. It's in their own journals. And they must say, I don't know how you got that lump on your neck, Doug, but let's consider, let me ask you a few questions. Been on lots of antibiotics? No. Drink a little too much alcohol? Yeah, in my 20s. Um, do, do you live in a moldy home? You know, I don't know. Well, take this mold plate home and test it and bring it back in three days. This is the way cancer is going to go if all of these are linked uh, to mimicking cancer, folks. We're exposed to these in our diet, in our drinking water. I mean, it's amazing our fungal exposure, and yet, mm, we don't know what causes cancer, but we're going to start to kill it with chemotherapy and radiation. What happened to open-mindedness? I met it in April 2016 with a group of doctors who are open-minded, and hopefully my information didn't fall on deaf ears as it has for 45 years. So this is fascinating. Grain mycotoxins glow green. An ultraviolet lamp or black light is often used in the initial screen to detect aflatoxin-contaminated grain. Let me tell you what that is. Aflatoxins are carcinogenic mycotoxins, and they're in some of the foods we're eating. Little tiny amounts, right? So it can, obviously you don't want it in the grain. During the test, the grain is cracked to expose the germ and endosperm tissue to the light. If any of the kernels grow a bright green yellow fluorescence under the black light, the kernels are presumed to be infected by the aspergillus fungus and may contain aflatoxin, and I hope those grains are thrown away. I don't know if they are. 
but at least they're detecting it. They have a diagnostic method. So they break the little wheat germ and hold a black light up to it, and they grow bright, uh, they glow bright green, okay? Boom. In this book, I want to teach you something. She has a chapter on fungus and cancer. Cancer slides glow green. Pathologist Migdalia Arnon describes green granules growing within human cancer tissues when exposed to light. The cancer tissues examined were from cancers of the breast, stomach, colon, lung, ovary, cervix, prostate, squamous uh, carcinoma of the lip, and a case of leiomyosarcoma of the leg, 100% showed the same green granules. Controls were 100% green granule negative. Can cancer tissue be tested for fungus? You bet it can, and everyone should. Every doctor who can access a laboratory for cancer tests can say, you know, by the way, this is a breast tumor. Check it for fungus. Takes a few weeks to grow it out, but it can be tested. Here's the bottom line. Want to see what it looks like? She sent me her personal slide. Look at this. This, she doesn't know what this is or why it's glowing green. These are cancer tissues. She doesn't know why all of this green. Well, if in the industry we're testing grains under a black light, like she did, and see it glowing green when it has a fungal infection, you don't suppose, do you? I do suppose. We'll be right back with more. You know what, it was 17 years ago or so I wrote this book. Dr. Dave Holland, Lee Cowden forwarded it, Dr. Cowden, Beverly Hunt, PhD, uh, helped us. The Fungus Link, it's still available today and still a bestseller. I mean, it's amazing. This happens for a reason, folks. A, a book like this, 17 years later, still selling and selling and selling. In one of the chapters, we talked about pain and we talked about a brand new syndrome back then called fibromyalgia. It's probably 25 years old. We talked about five million women then, probably 20 million by now, have this syndrome, right? And we said that 80% of the sufferers um, also have an associated problem. It's called CFS or chronic fatigue syndrome. So a lot of these women, they're so tired, and boy, their heads bob, all oh, their shoulders hurt when they get up in the morning and so forth. And this is kind of a mobile pain syndrome. Some of you have seen me talk about this in the past. I spoke at the medical school a couple of times out here because one of the secretaries at the medical school had the problem, came and saw Dr. David Weekly and I at Medical City Dallas, and we fixed it. And we helped her fix it with antifungals. Dr. Weekly said, what's it going to hurt? Let's put her on Diflucan and Nystatin. We didn't know the cause of fibromyalgia back then. But thank God she said, okay, I'll take it. I'll follow Kaufman's phase one diet. And do you know, she was so overwhelmed. She was young, probably 35 years old. She was so overwhelmed that she asked me to come out to the medical school and speak on two occasions. And doctors learned that don't be afraid of antifungal drugs or diet when it comes to fibromyalgia. A couple of things I want to show you. Number one is this slide. Um, fibromyalgia, according to the Mayo Clinic, doctors don't know what causes fibromyalgia, but they say it most likely involves a variety of factors working together genetics, infection, and physical or emotional trauma. I like number two. Let's talk about infection. Remember when a doctor or a medical company, the Mayo Clinic, talk about infection, the B word comes out immediately. Bacteria, everything's back, uh, maybe a little bit V, viral, but everything's bacterial. Gee, that's weird. We put these people on antibiotics and they didn't get better. As a matter of fact, they got worse. Duh. Let's talk about another kind of infection that doctors don't learn about in medical school very much. It's called fungus. Antibiotics would fuel a fungal infection and actually make it worse. The take home message here is this. Here's what I found. This is kind of Doug's hypothesis, and I worked with maybe a hundred of these people back in the 80s with fibromyalgia. When they woke up in the morning, depending on the side they woke up on, if they were sleeping on their left side, boy, their left uh, shoulder and elbow and hip and knee hurt horribly. Conversely, if they were laying on the right side, then the right side hurt horribly. Fungi gravitate to where there's heat. If they're laying on their back, the back of their neck, their pelvis, you know, their heels hurt horribly. So just think, folks, if this is a fungal infection, what have you got to lose? Go on a phase one diet. Pick up the book, The Fungus Link. It's all in here, the whole program. Uh, go on a phase one diet. Talk to your doctor about diflucan or nystatin for a few weeks. This will just accelerate your understanding. 
yeah, maybe there is a fungus. If in two or four weeks I'm feeling much better, there's got to be a fungal component to it. Is there always? I don't think so. I don't know if genetics, I don't know if emotional trauma plays a role in this at all. That's not my specialty, I don't know. But I will tell you very often, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome are infectious diseases induced by fungus. Now, a couple of doctors helped me write this book. Coming up, Nurse Herbacek is gonna join us and talk about HITS, genetic mutations. Then we have Dr. Fred Pescatori introducing a brand new probiotic which makes glutathione. What is that? You'll have to stay tuned. And finally, Dr. Greg Emerson talks about more energy. Don't we all want that? Don't go away, a whole lot more to come. Coming up in a few minutes, Dr. Fred Pescatori talks about a brand new word to many of you, glutathione. Before that, my favorite nurse, Jenny Herbacek, talks about HITS, genetic mutations. Remember, mycotoxins can cause those. Watch this. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. Cancer usually builds over time through a series of mutations and genetic changes that transform normal cells into cancer cells. Researchers call this effect multiple hits. These hits come at us in the form of many bad foods like trans fats, carcinogenic chemicals like pesticides, microbial overgrowth, and emotional trauma. As much as 95% of cancers develop because of these types of multiple exposures. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, so lessen your risk by doing things like adopting the phase one diet, manage your stress, and reduce chemical exposures. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. Dr. Fred Pescatori, all the way from New York City. Uh, Dr. Pescatori is a preventive medicine doctor. Very often, doctors like Pescatori say, I was seeing the patient too late in an emergency room. Why couldn't I go back to 10 years, 20 years? and show them how to get better. Uh, thank you for joining us today. The majority of your practice really deals in the anti-aging. And look at you, you know, you're a great poster for that. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank but you. you. we can't slow down the physiologic aging process. This is the year, Dr. Pescatore, I will turn 67 years young. And I feel so good. I remember dad being old, you know, at my age, but I still feel good. What you're all about is slowing down the physiology of aging. That's exactly right. And not right. so much of this as inside here, right? Right, there are plenty of doctors that do this. There's In New York, are there any? <laughs> <laughs> One or two. <laughs> uh, but uh, I really, for me, it's really all about being healthy. Mm -hmm. And when you're healthy and you're slowing down your body's mm -hmm. aging process from within, that's really w where critical health changes occur. You're not going to feel tired and fatigued all the time. You're not going to feel like, I'm 55 years old, I should feel this way. When someone comes into my office and tells me, well, I'm 50, I should feel like this. I'm like, no, you should. I, I literally want to jump or leap yep, across the yep, desk and yep. just shake them and say, you do not have to feel this way. It's because of what you're doing to your body inside, the cellular damage that occurs each and every time, that oxidative stress. Whenever you put, whenever you eat sugar, for instance, you get oxidative stress occurring in your body. That's what leads to heart disease. That's what leads to aging in your, that's what leads to those advanced glycation end products yeah. that are bound to kill us. A-G-E, it stands for something very good. It ages us. That's why I think sugar kills. That's my hashtag of the day, sugar good. kills. <laughs> but I really think it's super important that we look at antioxidants, we look at how do you support what your body needs to do in order to detoxify from the harmful effects of the life that we live. Well, you and I have spoken quite a while, uh, quite a bit about uh, the Reg Active product. I mean, this is so exciting, folks. If we could only take glutathione, have it become activated in our body, take it every day, uh, an oral form of it, wouldn't that be great? Or you can take an IV form, you do that in your office. Absolutely. And for three days, these people feel great who take it. Well, I'll let you uh, educate the folks because now we have a way of making little glutathione pumps inside our body thanks to Essential Formulas who brought you Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. There's a new kid on the block. I recommend them both together. Well, they have to be taken together. But glutathione, just for p if people don't understand what it is, it really is one of the major master antioxidants in the body. 
Glutathione works specifically in the liver. It works throughout the body as well in, in, in order to just gobble up all of those free radicals and, and, and really help us to heal. The problem with glutathione is we never could get it. The only way you could get it was intravenously. And here comes along this amazing product called RegActive, which I'm so excited about. And it's really changed a lot of my patients' lives because they don't have to come in. You know, it's nice to come in and get a burst of glutathione, yeah. but being able to have glutathione every single day, because you can't just take glutathione no matter what anybody tells you. And there are products out there that tell you you can. You can't take glutathione by mouth. It doesn't get past the stomach. Yeah. This RegActive is a probiotic called ME3 that actually helps your body synthesize glutathione, helps your body recycle its own glutathione, and glutathione is that major antioxidant that absolutely supports liver health and liver detoxification. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to age younger. How, how simple is it, too? I it, mean, you know. <laughs> you take it in a pill. Right, this isn't like they're injecting through the juggler to put glutathione in your body, it's a simple pill. You take Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. I've Absolutely. known you for a long period of time. Because that's now a probiotic. Right. Even though this is a probiotic, it's very specific for one thing, which is to create glutathione. And glutathione is an amazing antioxidant. I just wish more people could get it. And now they can. Now they can. That's the good news. I think it's probably one of, if not the only probiotic on the market today that actually builds little pumps inside your body of glutathione. This is major. When it's I first through. heard... I remember thinking, yeah, right. You know, because we've been trying to get glutathione in us forever and ever, amen. Yeah. And uh, I remember thinking that can't be true. Then they had me meet the two doctors in Los Angeles that developed it. And I'm telling you, they were believable, they were excited, and now you're on board with the two. That makes me feel good. Well, when they have research that can support saying what it does, and um, that's the only products that we'll ever talk about. So. And they do. I mean, mm -hmm. you've seen that research. I absolutely do. Thank you, Dr. Fred Pescatore. By the way, Dr. Dr. Fred Pescatori.com. Why take a probiotic when you can take two and make that much more glutathione in your body? It just makes common sense. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Well, those of you who have watched Know the Cause for a long period of time know that that is Dr. Greg Emerson, all the way from Brisbane, Australia. Uh, Dr. Emerson has a practice in Brisbane, but he also has a farm. And boy, I like to talk about that farm because you see him out there wrestling those animals and chopping down the leaves of these trees and grinding them and drinking it and so on. Good to see you here and thank you for coming in again. It's a pleasure, Dave. As a practitioner, a medical doctor, practitioner in Brisbane, I know in America what we hear most from patients who walk into a doctor's office. What do you hear? What is the most common complaint that walks into your doors? Fatigue, easily. Fatigue? By so. far and away. I'm tired. I'm tired all the time. I wake up tired. I never, my old energy is gone. It's the number one complaint. It's an epidemic in society. In, in America, of course, for men, that means their testosterone is low. So they'll go to one of these male clinics and get a shot of testosterone. They really believe, you know, that's going to fix the problem. I, I think in most cases, it's much deeper than that. Based on what you'd say, I'm going to show this now. I, I didn't know what you'd say, but when you're saying energy, which is the number one also in America, I'm going to show everybody this, and most of you don't know what that is, but you're built of these. So I'll let Dr. Emerson jump off and teach us a little bit about this guy. So it's interesting. I mean, there, there's two, there are two ways of looking at health. One is from a macro point of view, and the other is from a micro point of view. And they end up saying the same thing, just in different language. Now this is a micro perspective and that's inside a cell that we're all made up of. And the main component uh, that we want to talk about in terms of energy production is the mitochondria, which are these little, little red things, things there. Yeah. Which actually started off as bacteria uh, a long, long time ago and then actually were a parasitic infection of ours and it turned out to be a win-win situation. We gave them a home to live in and they gave us a lot more energy. Uh, whereas a lot of the bacterial infections and fungal infections now are win-lose. They win, we lose. But in this case, it was a unique arrangement <laughs> where it was a win-win situation because these things are the key to our energy production. What, what, I, what I think of energy, I think of ATP, yes. right? Adenosine triphosphate in the mitochondria and how to stimulate those. And 
this is where I love working with you above everyone else because you're a guy who digs in the dirt for his own food. You know what nutrients do, nutrition does, to make that food either a good or a, a baseline food. Um, how do we get more energy then based on amping up these little mitochondria in our cells? Well, I mean, I think the, the key thing that I always explain to people is that the best analogy is our cars. We don't put oil in our car. We, don't, we put petrol in our car. So to get petrol, we have to take the oil out of the ground and take it to the petrol refinery. The mitochondria are like the petrol refinery of the cells. We don't run on fat, sugar, protein. We run on ATP. ATP is the energy currency of our bodies. It's the petrol of our bodies. And the mitochondria, in combination with thyroid hormone, insulin, water, and oxygen, some of the most critical elements of health in the body, turn the fat, protein, and glucose into ATP. Mm -hmm. And again, it ties in well with some of the, com the common causes of fatigue, and particularly fungus and some of these bacterial infections, because they sabotage the mitochondria. They destroy the mitochondria. And then if you can't produce ATP, uh, one of the most critical um, systems in the body that's energy dependent is our immune systems. Our immune systems are incredibly, incredibly energy dependent and if these infections like mycotoxins and bacteria and viruses have sabotaged that, we don't have an immune system to get rid of them so they have a nice place to live for the rest of their lives. We don't have the time to walk into your office, shake your hand and let you walk us through, but I understand you do a lot of IVs, uh, bypassing the gut and putting the, the, things, uh, the uh, various products directly into the vein of the patient. Give me an idea in the 50 seconds we have left of good stuff for energy and horrible stuff that depletes our energy. Well, if you say the energy comes from the mitochondria, the mitochondrial wall is made up of uh, phospholipids, which are good fats. So we know from a micro perspective that good fat is good for the mitochondria. We know that nitric oxide is really good for the mitochondria. We know that thyroid hormone is good for the, uh, the mitochondria. So good fats, uh, nitric oxide, we now the, the beetroot juice, which is a uh, you know could be the poster child for the know the cause. Beetroot juice, beetroot juice, wow. uh, full of uh, nitrates, which can, can get converted into nitric oxide, and maintaining optimal thyroid levels and maintaining optimal insulin levels are all things which are going to keep our mitochondria healthy and boosting our immune system, so these mitochondria don't get infected. Worst thing for our energy. What's the worst thing we can do? Worst thing for our energy. Um, well, I think it just goes anything. For the, the energy, health is about energy. So, the, the worst thing for the best thing, the, the best thing for health is have a positive mental, mental attitude, followed by drinking good water, followed by eating good food. And I, I've uh, said so many times when I saw with the doctors I worked with, their patients who had lack of energy, uh, lack of movement, physiology, anatomy. You move, and you should move. Supplementation, good food. Not fast food necessarily, good food. Dr. Emerson, thank you. It's funny how a world apart we are. You just flew in. You were in Sedona. Love Is, Sedona. Isn't Sedona we amazing? We have developed oh, a love affair with Sedona. Good for you. Uh, and here you are in Dallas, and we suffer a world apart from the same syndromes, lack of energy. Okay, thank you for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Now, isn't that a show? If other health shows brought you 10% of this information, they would be great health shows. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Fred Pescatori, for introducing that word, right? Fascinating word, glutathione, master detoxer, right? There's the product. The ones on the left of your screen are the brand new product, Reg Active. This, of course, on the right of your screen is what I take every day. The, the doctor here is probiotics. I add one more supplement to my supplements every day, and that is Reg Active. Uh, also, folks, those of you pondering this fibromyalgia chronic fatigue, uh, were you on lots of antibiotics? Did you ever live in a moldy home? Right? Do you find yourself craving pasta and breads and alcohols and sugars and things of that sort? Those will get, do you get out of the shower and your skin itches? Remember, heat tends to activate fungus. And so those are all kind of precursors to understanding maybe I do have a fungal problem. Maybe I would do better on an antifungal program. So consider all that. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.